Listening to Breakfast with Martin and Angela. Now, 12 newly commissioned pieces of music are going to be performed at the coronation of the King and the Queen Consort. They're going to form a key part of this ceremony, and I'm delighted to say that we're joined by Rafe Hadelmanku, who's going to tell us all about this music. There are going to be six new orchestral pieces, five choral pieces, one new organ piece. It's going to be a feast of music. It's isn't going to it? be glorious, you know. I mean, every coronation always combines historic pieces with new commissions. The Queen had 40 pieces of music in her coronation, uh, nine of which were new commissions. But remarkably, even though the King's coronation is far shorter, he's actually got 12 new commissions. Um, and this is really, I think, to show that he really supports British culture, British music. Mm. He's patron of a huge number of choirs and of, of orchestras. And uh, I think this really is himself showing his own real genuine passion. I don't think any king since possibly Hanoverian times has had such a deep passion for classical music. Now, when the Queen was around, she came at the tail end of a golden age of British classical music. So she could choose Ray Fawn Williams, Sir William Walton, Arnold Bax, Arthur Bliss, great composers. Today's world is a lot different in terms of classical mm -hmm. music. And so we have people like Andrew Lloyd Webber uh, being chosen to, to compose the coronation anthem, which will put him up there in the ranks of Handel, who composed the most famous coronation anthem of all, Zadok the Zadok, Priest. Zadok, yes. Mm -hmm. Patrick Doyle. Uh, but that's, that's going to be in it, though, isn't it? Zadok the Priest That's been still performed there? at every yes. coronation since 1727. Yeah. King George II's coronation, just before the anointing that takes place, as is the vivat sung by the boys of Westminster Glorious. College, will always be there. <laughs> and we expect Hubert Parry's um, I Was Glad, which was a, a glorious piece performed for the Queen as well, and King Charles loves that. So we know that that's definitely going to be in there too. And Patrick Doyle, Scottish film composer, famous for Harry Potter and for Thor, films like that, he'll be doing the coronation march, which will put him in the ranks of Elgar, who did, of course, the four famous mm -hmm. four Pomp and Circumstance March is one better known as Land of Hope and Glory. And then we're going to have a lot of ethnic diversity and yeah. women. We were the first female and an ethnic minority composers will be there. We've got the master of the King's music, music, Judith Weir, the composer in chief of classic FM, Debbie Wiseman there. So a very, very different uh, type of uh, music will be performed there, but still a glorious occasion. I think we can all, after that last story about how dreary and glum Britain is, <laughs> something to warm the cockles <laughs> of British hearts, I think. <laughs> yeah. and, and a real Commonwealth flavour as well, because all, uh, building bridges with the Commonwealth, a huge part of Britain's future and a post-Brexit landscape. One final mention of Brexit in the show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. There's going to be a, a, an organ piece which will absolutely reflect different parts of the of the Commonwealth. The King, of course, reminding people that he's not just being crowned King of Britain. Mm -hmm. He will take the oath to govern the peoples of Canada and Australia, New Zealand, etc., etc. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. and I think we should also mention, which I think is lovely, that there's going to be the Byzantine chant ensemble who are going to sing Greek music. Mm. as a tribute to his father, of course, the late Duke of Edinburgh, who was a Greek prince. That's right, and not to be forgotten, some people thought there might be some multi-faith music, some Buddhist chanting. No, it doesn't seem to be the case, but there will be Greek Orthodox chanting, reflecting Prince Philip's uh, origins, but also, of course, the king's grandmother, Prince Philip's uh, mother, yes. was a nun in the Greek Orthodox Church, and through her, mm. he developed a really strong interest, a lifelong interest, I should say, in the Greek Orthodox Church. And we're seeing images on the screen there, which I'm sure will add to that feeling, Rafe, of warming the cockles. It's from the wedding, of course. Yeah, both <clears throat> sadly missed. Yes. Um, and a great moment to mock the new coronation. Looking forward to that. I'm sure everybody is at home. I think, as we said at the beginning, it is going to be a feast of music over the, what, four, it was four hours, the Queen's coronation, wasn't it? It was three, just, just over th just three hours. Just over three hours. This is going to be much shorter. Much but, of course, music either side also of the coronation service before and uh, after. Yes. And there'll be a big concert the next day as well with many, many famous faces. <laughs> Thank you, Ray, for your input. You certainly warmed us up this morning. Yes.